in this section we are going to be creating a service that uses the Angular resource module. This allows us to easily use REST API web services with our controllers and directives. In this video we are creating and testing the resource service using mocks and spies. A web app needs to interface with our server backend which is a REST API or needs to use some other REST API. To do this we can use the resource service which is included with AngularJS when you install it. Since we are practicing test-driven development, we start by writing a unit test for the service. Open the file spec slash unit slash order service spec and let's begin. Our service is going to be used for placing orders and getting the status of an order. First we want to load the pizza store module, then we have some setup to do before any tests are run. Our service requires that we mock out the HTTP backend, which is used by the resource module. We also need to inject a reference to the root scope and to the order service itself. Then we mock out the HTTP backend. The first API call we want to define is for placing an order. Using the when method of HTTP backend, we are seeing that when the mock backend receives a post request to the slash API slash order slash place URL, it will return a certain response. The respond method defines what the response will be. In this case, we want an HTTP response that has a 200 status code, meaning it's okay, and the response is a JSON object that has the ID of the order and its status, which is in progress. Basically, after we place an order, we expect a response that says the order is in progress. Let's mock out the second REST API call. We want to get the status of an order, and it's reasonable to expect that the URL looks like slash API slash order slash one slash status. The one is where the ID of the order would be. The response when resource hits that URL with a get method is a 200 status code and a JSON object that has a status of not ordered. Now let's start defining the unit tests. The first one is replacing an order. Important to note here is that we are dealing with asynchronous functions now. With resource and HTTP requests, you will not know how long the request will take. This means your test will also need to be asynchronous. The done parameter in our test can be called at any time to signal to the Jasmine testing framework that the test is indeed done. The HTTP backend provides the methods expect, expect get, and expect post to ensure that there is a request made through resource to the HTTP backend. We expect that there will be a post method made after we call order service .place order. When we call place order, we expect that when the request is finished, we will be receiving the status of the order to be in progress. After that, the test is complete. After we define our test conditions, we need to call HTTP backend flush. In the mock HTTP backend, this will run through all the HTTP requests that have been created, such as the one we created when we called the place order method. After flushing the HTTP backend, we have to call rootscope.apply to ensure that the scope is processed and that promises are executed. Now we're going to test getting the status of an order. We start by defining the unit test where we don't want an HTTP request to be sent. This happens when we haven't placed an order yet. To test this doesn't involve the HTTP backend at all. We simply call the getOrderStatus method in the order service and pass in a function to the promise returned by the method. We expect that the status will be null. Remember that we are writing an asynchronous test, so we will call the done function after this. After defining the test, we call rootscope.apply to process the getOrderStatus promise. In our second test, we want to make sure that the order status is in progress after we place an order. First, we want to make sure the get status handler returns the right response. It should return a response with a JSON object that has a status of in progress. We are making two HTTP requests. The first post request is made to place an order, and then the get request is made to get the status of that order. We write the expectations for these requests. Now we call place order and then get order status. Then we expect the status to be in progress. 
Again, we repeat the steps of flushing the HTTP backend and running apply on the root scope. With that, we're done defining the unit tests for order service and can begin implementing it. Open the order service and you can see that it doesn't do anything useful since its implementation is mocked out. We update the dependencies to include resource, which is how we're going to hit the REST API. We have to define an order resource. It will hit the API slash order slash ID slash controller URL. It will use the ID and controller parameters to replace those in the URL. It has two additional methods. One called place, which is a post request, and its controller is place. The other is called get status, and it is a get request, and the controller is set to status. Now we run the unit tests and we see all tests are failing. Let's fix that. Open order service and let's implement the place order method. We are going to call the place method on the order resource. We pass the pizza type on to the place request and wait for a response. Run the unit tests again and we can see that the place order test passes. Let's get to work on the get order status implementation so that the tests for it pass as well. Open order service.js again and let's continue after the place order implementation. Get order status will need to return a promise to match what we have in the unit tests. When an order is placed, we call get status on the order resource which will make the REST API call to the server. Right now, we are using sample data, so we pass in one as the order ID. When that's successful, we resolve the promise with the status of the order. If an order has not been placed, we just return null as the status. Now try running the unit tests. We see that all tests have passed. That's all for video 4.1. We did test-driven development and wrote unit tests first and coded to them. We used the resource module from AngularJS and we developed a mock for use in our unit tests.